Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and we're gonna be having a lot of fun, or I'm gonna be having a lot of fun and I hope that it provides fun for you as well. I'm taking a photo that honestly at first blush you look at it and you're like, oh, I kinda screwed that up because the sky is blown out. And that's what we're talking about in this video. If you've got a photo and the sky is blown out, how can you recover that and save the photo? So I've got this photo here and this was something I shot years ago, it actually as part of a bracket set. But I think you'll be uh, impressed, I don't know if that's the right word, but you might, might be uh, impressed, maybe even amazed at what you can do by recovering the highlights in a single image. Even though this, uh, as part of a bracket set, sort of by definition, uh, as one of the brighter images in the bracket set, by definition, the sky is blown out. Doesn't really matter in HDR, but we're taking just this single exposure, and I'm going to show you with a RAW file. Definitely, definitely shoot RAW if you can, because you can recover more from a RAW file than you can from a JPEG. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised, let's say, in terms of what I can do to recover that sky and turn this image, which looks like it's blown out, into something that's, frankly, I think quite beautiful. Now, the first thing I will do, and there's five tools I'm going to talk about. There's one that I would honestly never use. There's one that I would always use. And then there's three that I may or may not use as complements to the one that I always use. I hope that's not too confusing. I'm going to start with the stuff I don't use and work my way into the stuff that I definitely do use. However, the first thing I want to do is hit the J key. And by doing that, you'll see you activate these two little uh, dots up here in your histogram. And of course, what that means is all the stuff that's blown out turns red. And hey, Jim, <laughs> that's a mess. And it is. And you might think, uh, good luck with that, pal. I don't need luck. I need Luminar, and that's what I'm here to do. So um, I'm going to turn off. Actually, I'm going to leave the J key on. No, 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 hang on. I'm going to turn it off, and I'm going to show you the stuff I would not use. Uh, like I said, there's five tools. The first one that I'm not going to use is Dodge and Burn. I want to show you why I'm not going to use it. If you haven't used it, you click on Darken. I've got Strength of 100. I'm going to increase the size, and all this does, as the name implies, is darken whatever you paint over. Well, I'm going to darken this, and you will notice, like, some stuff is getting darker, but this stuff up here, this blown out sky, no improvement whatsoever. I just don't use Dodge and Burn. I'm going to actually talk about this in a future video. I, I don't really use it, and I don't I don't see the need to use it because there's a better way to do that. We'll get to that in that video, but I'm going to exit Dodge and Burn. That's the first tool I would not use. Well, in this list, it's the only tool that I would not use, but in reality, it's a tool that I don't ever use. Now, a second tool that I will use in this image, but only as a complement, is Accent AI. So you might come in here and say, ooh, Accent AI, let me do that. And honestly, it does a pretty good job if you look at that. I'm now I'm at 100, uh, so that's quite a bit much for that tool, as I've talked about like in that video. I don't recommend going really, really high with this slider, but it actually recovered the highlight. Hey, got a raw file, way to go. You could also add in Sky Enhancer to get a little bit more of that kind of uh, polarized kind of um, contrast in the sky, but honestly, I mean, it's an improvement, and if I hit the J key, like it looks better, like the uh, all the, uh, the blown out parts are gone, but I just wouldn't use that as the only tool and I definitely would not start there. Now, the other one that I will use as a complement but would never use by itself is Super Contrast. And you might think, well, there's Highlights Contrast. Let's just do that. Uh, let me turn off the J key so you can see the sky better. I went to 100, and you can try it either way. If I go left, it's blown out. If I go right, it's not as bad, but still pretty blown out. And even pulling in midtones and stuff like that, it's not impacting the sky, nor is it going to. So again, Super Contrast by itself, not going to work. Accent AI by itself could work. The problem is you risk overdoing the rest of the image. So I'm not really a fan of doing that by itself. Dodge and burn definitely does not work. And that leaves the other tool that may or may not be a good complement uh, to what you, what I think you should do. Uh, and that's Relight AI. You have brightness near and far, brightness far. Let's say I'm going to take that down. Pretty solid overall recovery. I mean, the sky looks a lot better. All the red went away and you can increase depth just to move that around. The thing is, is like it makes the image kind of flat. And I probably personally think of Relight AI as a compliment, and not just in this video, uh, not just as a compliment to a situation like I'm facing in this photo, but as a compliment to any photo. Anytime I use Relight AI, it's as a compliment or a supplement, like an add-on. That's not the tool either. So let me do that. Let me hit the J key. And first, let me go get rid of everything that's on the Edit tab because I'm not going to be using it. And I want to clear it all. And I can't clear Develop Raw or Noiseless Raw. They reside both there and in Essentials. And if you haven't figured it out, of course, Develop Raw is the tool that I'm talking about. Now there's 
really three different sections here that we're going to touch on the light section the black and uh, blacks and whites and curves curves is really powerful but for this specific job i don't really like to use it i can pull the highlights down and you know i get a, like a darker overall image and you know if you mess around with curves enough and you're really skilled at it you could probably target a fair amount of that and get a pretty decent result i personally find it to require a little too much uh tweaking futzing around whatever the word is i can do the same thing more quickly and more easily in these two other sections light and blacks and whites so this develop raw is the tool that i recommend and light and blacks and whites are the two sections that i believe are best so i'm going to turn on the uh the red again right the uh my blowout blown out indicator whatever you want to call it the j key uh and so the first thing you could do of course is just drop the exposure and that definitely does it i mean hey look at that way better now the problem is that's a universal thing in other words global thing as i like to say meaning it impacts the whole photo so you might use that or you might use that just a little bit of course highlights is a thing if i go negative 100 on highlights you can see i don't actually get them all now having that little of that red left in the sky actually doesn't look bad in my opinion i, th I know a lot of photographers that like if you got a lot of red you want to work to that uh, but if you leave a little bit like that i don't think that a lot of people would mind i think it actually would look fine overall um, that's a thing to think about and then whites is the other thing and so really what it comes down to for me by the way whites is not going to cut it right by itself so for me it's a little bit of all of it i just come in and i might take the exposure down slightly i do want to add contrast because i think contrast is useful note when i add contrast that's the difference between dark and bright the the bright stuff the blown out parts are getting uh they're increasing even though i dropped the exposure already a little bit that's because it's creating a greater difference so it's a delicate dance season to taste all those things i like to say it's definitely for me some highlights maybe some whites as well and i'm just kind of futzing around again until i kind of get what i like and i think that's going to be somewhere like maybe a little bit of drop in that i feel like now maybe a tiny bit more there just to get those last bits even though i just said you don't have to in this case i'm gonna go ahead and do that take those whites down a little bit take the highlights down i mean that, that's basically it maybe a tad more of exposure and i've got it all under control you can see the j key is still activated because those two dots are still in the histogram but now overall my entire photo is darker and i want to do some things about that which is going to be starting with shadows and bring those up a little bit i could also bring up the blacks because remember i added some contrast but i brought down the exposure and i darkened all the bright parts for lack of a better word by dropping exposure and highlights and whites um you got to be careful because you uh, i personally am of the opinion you still want to have some contrast in your photo it's looking kind of flat but i like the distribution of light and i personally like having kind of a flat start uh that's what it was like before and in fact let me turn the j key off there we go that's what it was like before seemed almost unrecoverable and that's what it's like now so now that i've done that i like where i am here's the challenge though is i need to go do some more things to make the photo pop and the next thing i would do would still be around the light and that's super contrast and that's for me pretty much always the second tool that i use after develop raw and this is always a season to taste kind of thing i tend to just move these sliders the the three main one the contrast sliders and then i come back with the balance and actually going to go a little bit negative to brighten that sky a little bit let me see what happens here i like a little bit of that and shadows balance maybe a tiny bit like that let me see the before and after as you can see i don't necessarily have a plan i just know i want to use super contrast so i think if you look at the trees they're a little bit darker now so there it was before and there it was after i think that looks good now the next thing i'm going to do is go get accent ai again use it as the name implies as an accent not as a default main slider but it really does a great job of popping and it does a lot of things to a photo which is why i recommend doing it later in your edit not first because if you do it first i feel like it can set you down the path of going over the top uh, and for me it's more of an accent type tool it pops a little bit of contrast it pops a little bit of color it does kind of what smart tone used to do in the uh, old like luminar 3 luminar 4 where it brightens the dark stuff without really brightening the bright stuff so it's again a great compliment to what i just did which was recover all those highlights and spend that time on so if you look at the before and the after that looks pretty good and you might come in with sky enhancer and if you let me just go high on that you can see what that does it really takes that blue and makes it a lot richer i might do a little bit there i don't want to do too much and maybe i'll go a little bit more in accent ai i just don't want to go too high i mean 43 is kind of pushing it but if you look at the result there it is before and there it is now i'm going to pull that sky enhancer back a little bit i'm going to pull accent ai back a little bit as 
as well. And I think that looks pretty good. I mean, that's a pretty balanced photo considering what we started with. And now I'm going to do a couple little things to kind of pop some of the color. The first one, of course, is Golden Hour. This was a beautiful sunrise, and I'm going to bring back some of those tones. And Golden Hour is a great, great tool for doing that. And on top of that, I'm going to go get toning, also known as split toning. And while I'm in the highlights, I'm just going to add a little bit of that saturation, uh, keep it kind of in that red hue because I'm trying to pop some of that warm color that's in the sky that also brings out some of the warmer colors in the buildings. You can see what that has done there. And the last tool that I would use to really complement the light here is Relight AI. And as I said earlier, it's a supplement or a complement like the other tools are to develop raw, which is the main tool I always start with. And in particular, I would definitely want to start with on this one when I had a blown out sky. But this is a great little way to pop the light at the end of an edit. So let's go like this and maybe say brightness near needs to go up. I would adjust the depth. I tend to go to about the middle, which is effective at 100 uh, and then the brightness far you could increase or decrease it I'm actually gonna brighten it slightly so like maybe a 18 or something just to bring that up a little bit and let me show you what Relight AI did for me for this edit there it is before and there it is now slightly brighter overall but different it's it's basically an adjustable gradient Relight AI so I'm able to brighten the foreground and brighten the uh, the sky if you will the top half of the photo at different levels in the same tool much like an adjustable gradient did in the past, but I think it gives me a nice little pop. There it is before, and there it is now, a little bit brighter overall. I like to use Relight AI in that way. And let me go show you what we started with, lest you forget. Let me show you. Let me hit the J key. Okay, so there's a tiny bit in the sky, but if I turn it off, I mean, you look at it, I don't really think that you would look at the sky and say, oh, you know, it's really pretty, great colors. Too bad you blew out those tiny little dots, Jim. I don't think you would uh, necessarily think that. But if you did, guess what? You can just go back into another instance to develop, pull the highlights down, and take care of it. Um, I, I won't do that here, but if it were to be something that bothered you, do it. You can use develop again and again and again, and I recommend doing that um, on edits, any edit, not just this kind of edit. So turn off J key. Now let me hit the backslash key so you can see what kind of sky we started with and what kind of flat overall raw file we started with, which is that blown out sky probably looked unrecoverable. It's to me one of those photos that if you saw either on the back of your screen after you took it, you'd be like, oh, I exposed for the foreground because I really wanted to brighten up and get a nice reflection but in doing so I really screwed up that sky dang it I better take a second one for the sky and then blend them or I got to get a filter or I got to do something else or you might just say uh, I screwed it up I got to do something different and just retake the photo or you know, maybe you get it in Luminar when you get home and you look at it and you think yeah yes yeah, it's blown out I don't want to edit it but with the raw file you can bring back a whole lot of stuff so that's what we started with my friends and that's where we are so you can see you can do a whole lot even with what appears to be a blown out image. Now, having said all that and demoed all that, it depends. Uh, just like everything in photography, the answer is it depends. And what I'm saying is whether or not you can recover a sky depends on how badly blown out it is. This one's pretty blown out. Um, as you saw from the all the red that was in the sky in the beginning, pretty blown out overall, and I was able to recover it. But there could be situations where you just have so much, it's blown out so far that you're just not able to cover it, and that happens. In that case, consider Sky AI and just go put a new sky in, which I could have done here, but I like that sky. The thing is, you may not know that you like this guy until you recover it and see, oh, I actually have a decent sky because you might look at that and think, oh, that, that sky's terrible. I can see a little bit of clouds in that upper right corner, but who cares? It's ugly. Let's put a new sky in. Totally up to you. It's fun. It's easy right there with Sky AI, but recovering the sky, doing a little bit of color work, working on the light and the contrast, I was able to get what I consider a beautiful and of course, vibrant and colorful image, seasoned to taste in that regard, my friends. But that's how I go about editing a photo. If it's blown out, I start with develop and then I may complement that with super contrast. Actually, I would just about every time complement that with super contrast, possibly Accent AI, possibly Relight, but I would not use Dodge and Burn. It just doesn't really work for that. It has its place, but I use other stuff instead of Dodge and Burn. If you want to see a Dodge and Burn uh, style video about what I do instead, I'm thinking about making one of those. Leave me a comment down below. I'll walk through that. That's it for today, my friends. Hope that gives you some idea of how all this stuff works and what you can do to save your own blown out images. Thanks for watching. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll be back really soon with another video. And until then, my friends, Adiós.